Hello, everybody, and welcome to Development TV and your latest edition of Expert Insight. My name is Dan Club. I will be your host as ever. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by a familiar voice and indeed a familiar face, not just to those who subscribe and watch our stuff here, but also to those who watch and listen to Sky Sports, essentially. Uh, Kevin Hatchard, how are you doing, mate? You okay? Yeah, really good. Really good, Dan. Great to be back. No, absolutely. It's our pleasure. Um, yeah, love having you on. Love having these conversations. So let's dive into another one. It's about centre-backs this time around. The, the next area of interest, if you like, when it comes to Liverpool 2.0. The rebuild has been successful so far. I think it's absolutely fair to say. And the next one, we're looking at the centre-back department, essentially. Um, Fabrizio Romano recently had his say on it, and he said Liverpool are exploring the market for potential new centre-back. I imagine and sort of envisage it will definitely be more for the summer. I mean, this January transfer window has been remarkably quiet across the board, let alone just at Liverpool. So it does very much like it's going to be a summer thing. But there's been names getting banded about and I want to run through a lot of them. A lot of them on the continent, of course, and you, European football expert, the ideal man to speak to. So let's dive straight into it. I, I want to group the first three together in so much as we'll do them individually, but they kind of all fall into the same category in so much as they all play in the, the Primera Liga in Portugal. Um, the first one, Gonzalo Inacio. Now, 52 million release clause there or thereabouts. Left-footed centre-back, 22-year-old, already a Portugal international. Appears to tick a lot of boxes. What have you made of him so far? Yeah, I think the thing with him is that he's experienced, even though he's in his early 20s, he's actually racked up a lot of games and has had that recognition at international level. As you say, left-footed centre-back, so that's always going to appeal because it opens up you know, a different set of angles in terms of the passing game. And if you look at sporting centre-backs in general, those passing stats are always going to be really high because they demand, require defenders who can pass through the press, who can burst through the press, you know, bring that ball forward. So, you know, you look at his stats and you look at um, Diamond's stats as well at, at sporting, might as well group them together. Diamond is a, is a much more physical Presence may be, but still very good on the ball, no doubt. He's more raw, he's younger. Mm -hmm. So with Inacio, Inacio, you're getting not a sure thing. You never quite know from the Primera Liga because it is a big jump. There's no doubt about that. But you, you're certainly getting somebody who's a bit more proven. Um, but yeah, I, I think what you want is somebody who's comfortable on the ball. What you want is somebody who can burst forward or pass forward. But what you don't know is when they go up a level, how that's going to change. What I would say though, about Ignacio is he's got Champions League experience, Europa League experience. So that counts for a lot as well. Yeah, absolutely. It does. Yeah. And I mean, Liverpool have had relative amount of success doing a little bit of shopping in Portugal in recent times as well. It's tended to be a good proving ground for what we're looking for. I think Pep Linder is a particular fan of that style and that yeah. brand of football as well. And also. Luis Diaz turned out all right, didn't he? Ex well, that's fair exactly. To say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And even, even in so much as the deal hasn't exactly gone through, there's been a lot of interest in that, in that league anyway, I think, in recent times. So it's interesting that those two fall into that category. In terms of Diamond, you mentioned him there he, he appears he's obviously two years younger he's only 20 very highly rated he's got a release clause around the 68 million you touched on him but what have you made of him he looks like a very exciting prospect yeah but prospect is the word that's the thing um you know i did the physicality but also good on the ball you know the potential is there there's no doubt but you know, you're going off a, a relatively small sample size, really. So I can understand why he's exciting. I can understand why clubs are looking at him. But that is more of a bet on potential. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, you know, you look at how, uh, for example, Jarrell Quance has come into yeah. Liverpool this season. You know, you would have asked people, you know, didn't know the club inside out. You would have asked them last season, who's that? And they would have said, well, why are you going to play this kid? He's been brilliant. Yeah, so, absolutely. you know, proven track record is not necessarily to be all an end all. But I think if you're putting those two sporting centre-backs up against each other, Inacio is obviously the one who's got a bit more experience and a, and a bit more of a track record. 
Okay, interesting. Yeah, you mentioned Quanta there, it's right to do so because he has been absolutely exceptional. And he, in a way, has made this conversation move on to more of a summer one because had he not been as brilliant as he's been since he came in with Joel Matip's injury, Liverpool would have had to have fast forwarded potentially one of these deals. But Quanta yeah. and Matip, or sorry, Quanta's brilliance and Matip's injury, they're not exactly the nightmare they could have been because of Jarrell Quanta. Yeah, and I think there's a there's a wider point here, Dan, actually, about Liverpool because there's a lot of talk of PSR at the moment, a yep. lot of talk of um, you know clubs having to tighten up, all that stuff. Liverpool, and I understand why there's obviously always been a debate about FSG, about do they spend enough, blah, blah, blah. I get that. Yep. However, what you don't want to do is block off your youngsters, right? And we've had Curtis Absolutely. come through. Yep. We've had Harvey Elliott play lots of game time, and which is really exciting to me. Um, Quans has come through. Yeah. I, I think these are important things for a football club to be doing. And mm-hmm. I think the temptation to always go out and spend, always go out and, you know, bring players in. I think Jurgen Klopp's always been of the opinion that you have to look internally first. Who are who are the kids who we can look at and bring through? So so yeah, I think I think if Liverpool keep that balance, I think that's going to be really, really important because I think the temptation is always, oh, we need to spend more, we need to get more resources, we need to do this. You do need to bring players in. Yeah. Liverpool have done that largely very successfully, but you don't want to block off the kids. I mean, I'm kind of going off topic here, really, okay. but but I just think Bradley's a really good example, yeah. right? So there would have been a group of people who would have been, what happens when Trent's injured? We need yeah. to go out and get right absolutely, back. Yeah. We yeah. don't. There's a guy over there and he's really good. So, yeah. <laughs> so no, that kind of thing. It's that balance you need to strike. No, 100%. And balance is absolutely the key word there. But you're right. I think a lot of people would have clamoured for a right back. But Liverpool, that never seemed to be a, a situation within the club, really, because they clearly knew they had Conor Bradley. We signed Calvin Ramsey to be that, but it, never, it hasn't really materialised. He's been yet. unlucky with injury, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah. There's been yeah. stuff going on there. He could well become that. He needs a good second half of the season on loan somewhere, potentially. And he could well be that guy again. But you're right, Conor Bradley's been exceptional, as has Joel Conter, as we mentioned. Um, but I think in terms of the balance, it does feel, like I said Liverpool will be doing something and the next thing I want to touch upon this would be this might be one of the more exciting ones potentially still in the Premier, Premier League Antonio Silva at Benfica another 20 year old he's been touted as potentially the next sort of 100 million euros guy that is a hell of a lot of money but <laughs> yeah. does it warrant that price tag that billing that type of praise I like him a lot from what I've seen, um, uh, he's been a bit unlucky. If you look at the Champions League game against Salzburg, uh, he got sent off for handball. He was really unlucky. He was following in um, uh, a shot that came off the bar and he just stuck his hand out and, oh, okay. <laughs> got, okay. and got sent off. So, but I, I actually go back the previous season and as such a young man coming <laughs> into Champions League games and he performed exceptionally. So again, you know, I I can understand why that there is all of this buzz about him. You look at Benfica's track record in terms of, you know, Ruben Diaz came out of there with very similar hype. And I, I don't think anybody who saw him at youth level would be surprised that he's made the strides he's made because you looked at him and you thought, right, there's a leader straight away. Um, with Silva, very natural defender, um, clearly very, very talented. Benfica are always going to slap a high release clause on a player because that's what they do and they mm-hmm. do it very successfully yeah. and they've made lots of money doing that. Um, and you have to say he's been part of a very successful team under Roger Schmidt because they were able to win the Primera Liga. Um, you know, there is genuine competition at the top of that league. Mm-hmm. You know, Porto are always there under Sergio Conceição. Sporting have done well under Amorim. And they've won the title previously. Mm-hmm. So it's not an easy league to win. And yet he's been part of a team that's been very successful under Roger Schmidt. And I always think with Roger Schmidt, the way he plays demands quite a lot of his centre-backs because he's quite gung-ho in the way he approaches things. So um, 100 million is a stretch at the moment, but I can understand why there's a lot of buzz about him. 